<laughs> have you ever wondered what narcissism truly means like what it actually looks like how do you actually recognize it in your relationships have you seen it in your relationships do you even know what it is Today we're going to be diving into some aspects about narcissism and just understanding more pieces, kind of pulling back and looking at different aspects of it and how it shows up in your relationships, in the life that you live and around you. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness of narcissistic abuse. I'm the founder of Raw Motivations, the creator of the NARC app, and your guide in the seven-day challenge called Escape Toxicity that you can access at escapetoxicity.com. It's a seven-day challenge for $7 to have you start moving forward and understanding how to be free from toxicity. How do you actually start moving forward in a healthy way? Today, we're going to dive into talking through different aspects of narcissism and narcissistic personality disorder. I'm not going to dive into all the nuances of all the nine diagnostic traits per the DSM-5, but we do have some videos coming up about that following this week, talking about the DSM-5, the nine diagnostic traits, and what that looks like when we're talking about seeing narcissism in the wild versus like in a test tube inside the DSM-5. Okay, so when we talk through the aspect of narcissism, it's important to start peeling back the layers of what it actually is. It's not just the vanity or the self-love. It's not just snapping selfies and, and feeling prideful. There's a lot more different nuances about it. Sometimes people think that it is self-love when in reality it's more like self-hate because a narcissist doesn't love themselves. They love the image. They're infatuated with the image that they're putting out there. Even the old Greek story of Narcissus, where we get some of this aspect of narcissism as far as when we talk through the, the title of it and everything, comes from the idea where he fell in love with his image. He didn't fall in love with himself because then he would have gone and taken care of himself, but he died because he fell in love with his image, the reflection of the water, than he did with anything else. So it's not about self-love. So trying to be able to paint that really quick, okay? It's multifaceted when we talk through this personality disorder that's characterized oftentimes by an inflated sense of self-importance, that I'm more important than you, that I matter more than your needs, than your opinions, than your feelings, all of that is inside consequential and doesn't mean anything. I'm the biggest thing in my life. I matter the most. Okay. Then it also steps into this piece of needing excessive attention or admiration. This is where a lot of times you'll find a narcissist that cheats because he's looking for multiple people to have that attention from, or that is just texting or having this emotional pair with like hundreds of people because he's looking for getting this validation, this attention from other people that makes him feel better about himself. Okay, so that's typically what we're looking at in those different aspects. And a huge one that people talk about is a lack of empathy. And that's where a narcissist is unwilling to identify or acknowledge your needs. It doesn't really care about your needs. But it also doesn't seem to even affect them if you're crying or if you're upset or if you're having a panic attack or if you're screaming. He's just more concerned about himself and what he wants in that moment. You're going to see different aspects of manipulation where he's using you, exploiting you for what he wants. You're going to see different aspects where he's more infatuated with the stuff that he wants to do, fantasizes about things that like he wants to have happen in his life, what he's looking for in life. And if you're not in that picture, oftentimes he's discarding you. Sometimes just that importance, the arrogance that comes out of like, I'm better than you and I'm going to look down on you. Sometimes that comes out in rage of him getting upset. There's so many different pieces of it that it'd be hard for me to tap into everything without this being a super long video. And we're going to talk through some other aspects too. But when we talk about narcissistic personality disorder, it's typically coming from a frame of abusive. Sometimes people are like, oh, narcissists aren't abusive. Well, then you need to understand narcissistic personality disorder as it's listed out when someone is exhibiting those traits is typically abusive. You don't find someone that has arrogant behaviors, feels entitled to other people, and shows no empathy that's going to come across as a loving, nice person. It just really doesn't work that way, okay? But a lot of times people pose that question. Well, when you think about it, like a partner who is constantly seeking praise, validation of how he is, of how he looks, of whatever it might be, disregards your feelings, disregards your opinions, and manipulates the situations to just help himself all the time keeping this act, this air of like, I'm so superior, I'm so amazing, I'm so good, okay? Now, when we talk through narcissism, it is a spectrum. There's different shades, different aspects of narcissism, okay? And when we talk through narcissism, not everyone it has narcissistic personality disorder, 
but there are a lot of people that are narcissists, okay? Because you can be narcissistic in nature of how you're showing up or in how you're treating other people. When we talk about existing in a spectrum, it can range from all of it being like in a, in a healthy mode of like self-confidence to pathological narcissistic personality disorder, okay? Where it becomes something that, that's arrogant. And so like just that's one example of polar extremes, right? But then oftentimes you also have the spectrum of where it keeps going. And when it keeps going, you'll move into sociopath, antisocial disorder. When it keeps going, you'll move into psychopath. you move into different layers of narcissism that are more extreme, that are more awful, that are more abusive, more intentional, a whole different layer of stuff, okay? But understanding that it's a different, some, uh, that it's a spectrum sometimes will help you differentiate between normal behaviors and red flags. Um, all in all, that's why a lot of times we won't even focus in the healing process. We won't even focus on, is he a narcissist or not? We'll focus on what do you actually see demonstrated? How does he actually show love or care or respect? Or how is he actually demonstrating that he's faithful or that he's honest? Because that's what's more important. So many people will stay in a toxic relationship for far too long because they don't have the stamp of narcissistic personality disorder on their marriage or on their partner. So as a result, they're like, I'll just stay. I'll work on it. I'll, I'll, he'll get better. And it doesn't. And so what I would have you understand is if you're looking and holding out for that diagnosis or that definitive answer of this is what it is, you might be selling yourself short. You might be at a place that it's actually going to hurt you long term because you're not looking at the facts of the situation, but you're looking for a label to set you free. Unfortunately, the label won't change the trauma bond, the addiction, the obsessive thoughts, the, the lack of peace that you have that won't change at all. So when we talk to this piece of like narcissistic personality disorder and seeing like the red flags that are there, you're going to see different people in your life, especially once you know, you're going to see more people with narcissistic traits, but they range. They range from, from being minimal to being very, very aggressive and very awful. Um, but it's important for you to understand sometimes there's a range. That's why whenever we see a red flag, it's like, hey, we're going to count the cost and we're going to see what all is there. We're not just going to be like, well, there's this one thing, definitely narcissistic. No, like we're trying to take a look at a pattern of this being in their life and also a pattern of different attributes of narcissistic personality disorder being present. Again, we're never identifying and we're never acknowledging and we're never getting to a place that we're saying in um, prescribing a diagnosis, okay? All we're doing is saying like, hey, these are the traits, this is what's going on. If this person's coming across this way, maybe you need to consider actually getting out of this relationship because it could be dangerous and it could be something that is emotionally and mentally abusive. So we need you to understand like a lot of times you're going to see a lot of manipulation, a lot of lack of empathy, Different aspects like that. Those can be different red flags you're going to see. So it's important first to have some of the telltale signs shown of narcissistic personality disorder. You're going to see some of the same patterns. And that's what's important for you to understand. It needs to be patterns. If you just see this like one off, then you're like, uh, it doesn't really seem like it. But when you start to see a pattern of this type of abuse, it becomes more grounded of like, okay, this is something that I really need to look at. Now, whether that's the grandiosity, the entitlement, exploitation of others, excessive admiration, all of those can be different patterns leading back to the diagnosis of narcissistic personality disorder. You might have someone who constantly belittles you, puts you down, takes credit for your achievements or your work, like expects the attention, expects all these things, and they might be likely to exhibit narcissistic traits, okay? So see, we're trying to like tie it all together, like, hey, we want you to be able to recognize it, but then in more than recognizing it and more than the label, you need to start getting help for it. Now, what I mean by that is like getting help for it is not saying, hey, how can I help the other person? Because you can't change him. If he's unwilling to acknowledge the stuff that's happened, if he's unwilling to be honest, there's nothing you can do. So many people look at people on social media like myself, Lee Hammock, other narcissists that are on here trying to help people. And they're like, why can't my narcissist be like you? Well, because your narcissist is a liar and he's not honest with himself or with others and he doesn't care about you. And that's it. And so people are like, well, how are you different? Well, because I confronted the lies. I had to work through that. I've got several videos talking through my journey. I can't dive into that because we'll run out of time. But understanding that if someone is not willing to be honest, vulnerable, or show consistent change, nothing will change. No matter what. It'll always stay the same. 
So you need to have help in navigating the narcissistic maze of how do you actually get out of the abuse that you've been put into, the lies, the stories, the things that you believe from being with a toxic person. Now, whether it's a partner, a family member, a coworker, whoever it might be, it's extremely hard. So establishing boundaries, starting to work on your self-care, but getting involved in a group that's actually going to help you move forward. This is why all of our challenges and communities come with a group of people for you to be able to connect with, for you to be able to understand this is how you're going to move forward. This is how you're actually going to heal. Remember, not just understanding it and recognizing it is not enough to be free. Until we actually work on rewiring the story that you believe, changing the mindset, you will continue to go back to a toxic person over and over and over again. If I can help you break free, go to rawmotivations.com, click on the one-on-ones, would love to help you move forward. If you're ready now to start moving in that direction, take the seven-day challenge for $7, escapetoxicity.com to start your healing journey and start to liberate yourself today. Knowledge won't heal you. Time won't fix it. Just going no contact will not save you. You need the tools to actually work through the triggers and the story you're telling yourself on a day-to-day basis. 